Welcome back to part two in my series on Glacier Media. Watch till the end and you'll find out about the one big looming threat that really could change everything. Now, as always, please make sure to like, comment, share your feedback. Let's get into it. Last week, I ended off by saying I thought that Glacier Media should split into different businesses. And I think digging into the balance sheet, we'll see why. The first thing to notice is that their current liabilities are greater than their current assets. It means that they don't have enough currently to cover their liabilities for the next 12 months. Often this type of liquidity crunch is going to be a precursor for company failures, but in this situation it might not be as bad as it seems. Almost $8 million of their current liabilities are deferred revenue and deferred revenue is just when a company gets paid for something before they actually have to do the thing. So for example, when you buy a gift card for the company, that's deferred revenue. It's not a liability like a loan where they're going to have to give you that cash back at some point, but they still have an obligation they have to fulfill in the future. Removing that deferred revenue, the picture does become a lot better for them, but they'll still be in a shortfall of about $100,000. And so to be clear, not good. I do think that shortfall is ultimately going to be manageable for them. Otherwise, the balance sheet looks much clearer. They have about five and a half million in lease liabilities, about eight and a half million in other long-term debt most of which is explained in the notes to be mortgages on their land and buildings and whatnot. Now, things do start to get even more interesting when you look at the non-current assets. It's pretty clear based on where their share price is at that the market does not agree at all with the valuations that they currently have on their assets. You'd expect a company with over 200 million in assets and less than 70 million in liabilities to have a market cap that's higher than 18 and a half million. That brings us to the pretty important note that might explain at least some of this gap. And that's that they have a massive potential tax bill, which right now they do not have the resources to pay. And if they lose, they're likely going to owe the government an additional $50 million on top of a deposit they've already had to make related to the case. So they haven't actually recorded any liability amount related to this. So that to me implies that they're quite confident in their position. But if things don't go well, could be a potentially pretty big issue. That said, even if they do lose, I'm inclined to believe that the government would rather work out some sort of long-term payment plan with them rather than bankrupting a Canadian company that would otherwise be a going concern. But that's just speculation and you have no way of knowing unless it actually happens. First thing I think they should focus on restructure wise is selling assets. There seems to be a huge gap between what's on their balance sheet and what the market values those assets at. Once those assets are sold and the company has cash, all things being equal, their share price should rise because at least in general, markets don't apply a discount to the value of cash. Secondly, I think they should take a good look at whether or not they actually need to own land and buildings. I think they could earn a better return deploying that cash within the business and just pay rent if they even need those facilities at all. My estimate is that this wave of asset sales could probably generate in the range of $15 million. Obviously, more the better, and if it's less than this, could change the calculus. But that would still leave them with about $7 million even after paying off those mortgages. And I think that cash could be used to further simplify the business, invest in some of their highest potential units, even performing share buybacks, helping take the company private, all these things that I think could help them in their quest to simplify the business and improve overall results. The moral of the story here is that Glacier Media has a big potential issue looming over their valuation. But despite that, I think there's still a lot that can be done to help boost their financial health and, of course, their share price. And since they've started the restructuring process anyway, as you see, it's probably better to just go and, and do the really tough things now rather than leaving employees with lingering doubts and wonders about what's to come next, because that's a really hard environment to be able to build the business back up again in the future. Make sure you guys are on the lookout for next week's video when I'll take a deeper look at Glacier Media's income statement. As always, if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, please let me know.